just, just hold it in. Leave it up! Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. It's gonna be a little bit confusing because we actually filmed one yesterday which was a van update, basically letting you guys know what we've been up to recently, what we've had done, what we're doing and what's happening. But that's coming out after this video and today's video is basically preparing to move. We are moving barns and we're moving barns before we go away so we've got to get all of our crap moved and you'd be surprised at the things that we have accumulated in this space over the last two months so today's going to be a lot of fun tidying that up we're also hoping to build our sink let me show you i'm sure you've seen it but i'm going to show you what we're making the sink out of so this jam pan right here is what we're building the sink out of. It belonged to Theo's grandma and it's going to be a really nice touch to have that as our sink in the van, have a little piece of home with us. And one of the things we really like is to be able to turn things that aren't being used into anything anymore into something useful. So that's what we're doing with that today, that's the plan. Theo's just gone out to the shops to get some tools for it. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to Squarespace who has sponsored this video. I'll talk a little bit more about them later. But for now, I've got some tidying to do. All right, so it's kind of hard to tell. It might look the same to you, but I've actually organized a hell of a lot of stuff. It's amazing how much stuff accumulates, but I'm just looking and we've got a pile of pallets that we need to deal with. I don't know whether we're gonna chop them up, leave them as they are, or what, but we've gotta get them out of here. So let me just show you how big the pile is. So this is the pallet pile. Not massive, but not tiny. And I guess at some point, we're gonna be taking them off the frame and separating them. So I don't know whether maybe we should just do that today. And then they're a lot smaller and easier to manage like this wood over here. These are all pieces of cladding that were slightly damaged in the pack. So we couldn't use them for cladding the walls, but they might be useful for other little bits. And then also along here, <laughs> check it out. This is the wood pile. These are all bits that we've kept that we might need. Uh, but I think we might have to thin this pile down because it's a little bit crazy. And also, I don't know if you spied, but we've got some insulation left over there. We're going to keep that for the barn in Portugal. And then this here is left over... Well, that looks like 50 mil, Salatex, and that's 25 mil. So we can actually use this on the ceiling. But I don't think we're going to be using that, so we'll keep that and take that to Portugal with us as well. So lots of little things that we need to keep. It's just deciding what's actually useful. And I'm waiting for Theo to come back with lunch because it's about two o'clock in the afternoon and I'm getting peckish. So uh, hopefully he won't be too long. I'm really hungry. Look who's arrived, everybody. Hello. A third And that means I've had lunch and now Oh my god, I could do with a nap, I'm so tired. Can I have a nap? No. No. Work to be done. <laughs> Not a nap, I'm so tired. Do you ever get it when you have lunch and then afterwards you just want to sleep for like two hours? I could do with sleeping. So, welcome to my woodworking show. Woodworking? Are you drilling into a metal sink? Right, so we have our plug hole, which is very important when you're making a sink. <laughs> this is 32 mil, and what I've chose to do is get a 51 mil hole saw. The reason for that is it doesn't sit flat at the top of the plug, so therefore it'd be sticking out a huge amount in the actual basin, which I don't want. I want it to sit as flat as I can to the surface, so that should work perfectly, but before I actually drill the hole into our lovely metal jam pan. One of a kind. One of a kind. 
I'm gonna cut a hole in a piece of scrap wood and then test it out and see if it works. You're doing it in this? Yeah. This just... is our old wheel arch cover for the van. <laughs> What's that difficult one-handed? <laughs> okay, competition time. <laughs> Who wants to win this? <laughs> so we got our plug hole. It's a moment of truth to see if this fits. Should do. Take that off. I imagine that that rubber bit goes on the top of there yeah. to seal it. And this bit goes on the underside. I haven't looked at the instructions, but... Probably a good idea to do that. Right. There Ooh, we go. Hello. And then... Hello, with nice sink there, nice wooden sink. Always good wooden sinks, <laughs> they're really waterproof. It's always good to test these things properly before you do it on the proper thing, otherwise it's pretty dangerous. You know, you don't want to get it wrong and waste a one of the kind unique piece. So there is still a little lip. Yep. What do you want to do about that? But I always knew that there would be a little lip. There is with most uh, plug holes. That's just how it is, unless it's an actual designed basin because they kind of like route it out or whatever. But I knew that would happen. So what I've gone and got earlier when I went out and got the other pieces and the other tools is some epoxy resin, which is clear. So we're gonna pour the epoxy resin into the basin up to the level of the plug hole. So therefore, the water should not stay in the basin. It should go out nicely when we want it to because I've seen some people's sinks and the water just sits there and it's not ideal. You have to end up like sweeping the water out, which would just be a bit annoying. So fingers crossed, this works. Step one is to measure the circumference and then find the center. So I've flipped the jam pan upside down to measure it. And I'm gonna cut the hole upside down as well because it's just a lot easier, it's a lot flatter. So, it looks like it's about nine and a half. So you could find the middle of that, which would be 4.75. So if I mark that out, and then uh, we can carry on from there. So we've found the middle, and I'm just gonna use a screw so that I can put a little indentation so my drill bit, when I drill in, doesn't slip. So, right in the middle. So now, it's time to drill. And guys, never forget your safety glasses. On this uh, hole saw, you wanna go nice and fast to begin with and then slow down because it can really heat up. Ah, good time for it to die, again. <laughs> Happens every time. <laughs> it's lucky that we have a spare battery all the time. Yeah, this is our drill that likes to die midway. And we have, we, we purposefully got one that has two batteries that are rechargeable, so that we always have a battery on charge. But uh, yeah, you can see where it's gonna go. Okay, so take two, let's try again. Yeah! We've got a hole! <laughs> oh yes. Oh, very nice. So we just need to uh, probably sand that off a little bit. Looks good. Looks in the middle. <laughs> it's a good start. Right, so I just got my new metal file that's curved. So it should be perfect for this kind of thing. It's so new, it's got the plastic on. <laughs> it's all tidied up now. The hole's looking super fresh. Let's see. Yeah, it looks just like a hole. In the hole. So obviously when you put the resin in, you don't want it to be really dirty because you'll be able to see everything under the resin because it's completely clear. Yeah. So I'm just going to put the plug hole in here and see how it fits, <gasps> hopefully well. We're going to have ours recessed, I think. We're not sure how yeah. far we're going to recess it into the kitchen worktop, but we're probably just below the handles, so yeah. the handles still stick up, because I quite like the handles. I right? like the handles, I want to keep them in, but I definitely don't want it sticking all the way out, because it would just be irritating trying to get your hands in when you're washing up if yeah. it's sticking out. It's crazy, isn't it, how you could turn something that just isn't a sink into a sink very, very quickly. Oh, wow. 
Looks nice. That as does well. look nice. That looks like a sink. So due to the nature of our sink not being a traditional sink, the tightening mechanism stops about six mil short of the base of the sink. So we're going to put a little filler in there. Little, we're probably going to prop a piece of wood in it because this is just the underside of the sink anyway. It'll be watertight from the top, so we just need something to keep it nice and jammed. So we're going to so make it, something fit. Something like this 12 mil plywood work. So what I'm going to do is cut out the same hole with the hole saw and then just have a square edge around it. So this will still sink right into the countertop, but then this will have some leverage to actually tighten up because they're just not designed to do it on super thin metal. Yeah. These plugs are designed for ordinary sinks. So that is our problem, but we will get around it. And if you guys are wondering why plywood, maybe that's not a good idea around water. If water comes out onto the plywood in that position, you've really got a problem anyway, so that's not gonna happen. It's gonna be nice and watertight, so this plywood should never get wet. I was just looking for a pencil, then I realized I've been to Screwfix today. That, uh, always gotta take their pencils. That's what they're there for. Right, I'm just gonna mark off a nice tidy square around here, cut it out, and then that's our nice little wedge. So it worked. That's just our piece of wood under there, makes it a bit wider. And then this is super solid now. And because there's gonna be resin all the way on the inside, there's no way any water is gonna get through onto that piece of wood. So now we've just gotta clean it up. So I've just cleaned the jam pan. It's ready to go and we're ready to mix the resin. And as you can see, we got all of the dirt out but it's stained the actual jam pan, but we don't mind that at all because, you know, it's meant to be rustic. So welcome everyone to Epoxy Resin Class 101. This right here- Because you're an expert. I am an expert, I've done it never in my life. Believe it or not, I used to work a lot with epoxy and resins and hardeners and stuff like that because I used to do a lot of uh, carbon Kevlar stuff and fiberglassing repairing my old kayak. So I've done this before. It was a hell of a long time ago. So I've forgotten it all, but it can't be that hard, can it? So yeah, B's just cut up these uh, bottles so that we can put the resin in that because we don't have any mixers because we're obviously prepared as always. We're always ultra prepared. I just hope that this isn't too big and it's like really thin. As long as we can pour it, yeah, it's that's fine. True. Check out my gloves. I'm all ready. And this is our resin and our hardener and our little measuring cups. These little sticks to stir it and we're all ready to go. Step number one is to put the plug in because we're getting the resin to harden around that. So that's 100 mil and that's 200 mil. So I don't need the measuring cups I can just pour. You're gonna use it all? Yeah, might as well, it's quite a big surface area. Hopefully it covers. If it doesn't cover, we're gonna be like, ah! <laughs> Half yeah. finished resin! Right, so I wanna put the hardener in first. Okay, so you put that in. Now to put this in. This is resin. Now you've gotta mix it up really well. I just hope there's enough. But don't mix too strongly or else it can make bubbles. So just mix it nicely. Yeah, and I hope there's enough. I don't actually, as long I as don't it think brings, there's enough. As long as it brings it up a little bit. I don't think there's the enough. So that's it, it's all complete. I'll show you in a second what it looks like. You can't really see much because it's clear resin, but we actually had a little bit too much in the end, which is always good. Just shows how well I measured it. <laughs> but the thing is, we have made sure that it goes slightly above the rim of the plug hole. That way the water won't sit in the basin and it will just easily flow out when we want it to, which will be really, really good 
things like that make your time living in a van a lot easier. So as you can see, you can't really see anything. It's completely clear. You can kind of see on the edges where it is. Right up to the plug hole. And that should look really nice when it's finished and very practical. What we're going to do now is leave it in place. We don't want to move it at all because obviously the resin will slosh left and right and will cause marking. So we're going to leave it exactly where we used it. And B's going to put a plastic bag over the top so nothing from the barn can fly onto it. No dust can get into it because if it does, you're never getting that out. So whilst we wait for the resin to dry, Theo has been chopping up our pallet pile like I said he would, so we can move it. Go on, show him how it's done. This tool is amazing for pallets. Like, it just cuts through it like butter. Yeah, that looked like butter. You hit a knot. Uh, whatever. The only one we film, I hit a knot. <laughs> okay, next attempt. Let's watch the butter. And before any of you guys say it, I know you can get a special pallet tool ripper up a thing that looks like a crowbar, but this is what we have, so this is what we're We, we don't need the full lengths, so we don't need one of them because we just don't. They're short. We just don't. Right then, there is a lot of pallets. As you can see, a lot of nice pieces that look really rustic. I'm not sure if we will do anything with them, but it's worth having because they're free. Packed away all our tools pretty much. Might have saw some other bits and bobs. For some reason, we have a hell of a lot of plastic bottles and all that wood has got to be moved. I'm not gonna lie, it's not the most fun thing we've ever done, but at least we've got a roof over our heads while we're working until the van's finished, so that is a very good thing. So it's worth moving out of here and going somewhere else. So good morning, it's very, very windy today. There's a storm blowing through, so the barn is rattling like you wouldn't believe, but it's been about 16 hours since we laid the resin in the sink. Let me show you what it looks like. So the resin is now touch dry. It still looks wet, which is just so cool. It takes 24 hours to set completely and be rock hard, but we can move it now, which is brilliant. And it looks amazing. We love it, don't we? So chuffed with how that's turned out. It's turned out amazing. It's gonna look incredible. Like when you look at it, I don't know, it just looks cool. It does look cool, I really, really like it. So we're gonna move this somewhere, but we are leaving the barn today. I'm gonna to set up a time lapse and show us moving everything out, so let's go. So the place is really starting to get empty now. We were always so stoked when we got. This wind is crazy. We were stoked when we got this barn, but it was only for a short period of time. So sadly, it is sad that we're having to leave, but hopefully the new place that we're going will be just as good. <laughs> and it's actually been a good thing that we have to move because as you could see, we have accumulated so much stuff that we don't need. So we've got a lot of stuff that's going to go and be recycled, loads of cardboard that we don't need, scrap bits of wood. And then we've also kept quite a lot of stuff because you just don't know what you're going to need. And I know that we do video posts, oh my god this wind, about the whole build. But I'm also writing blog posts as well on our website. And that's one of the things I love about our website that we've got with Squarespace. It has an inbuilt blog on it, which is just fantastic because I used to write a blog years ago. I'm trying to get back into the swing of doing blog posts again. So if you want to create a website and you want to blog on it where you can write little articles and stuff like that to share, definitely recommend giving Squarespace a go. And with our code Indie Projects, you can get 10% off your first purchase or a domain. So yeah, squarespace.com slash indie projects, check it out. 
you get 14 days free as well so it's worth a shot and i really hope you enjoy the blog posts that i do put out i'm slowly been writing them i'm accumulating quite a few so i can release them on a schedule but yeah it's been a lot of fun and it's sad that this chapter's closing but on to a new one check it out people an empty barn how do you feel about leaving this space theo emotional emotional Very you can emotional. see the raw emotion on your face no, I just, can't just hold this it anymore. in <laughs> <laughs> so all we have left in here now is our broom that we need to take with us and i just spotted two random pieces of cladding which you may as well take too and then all that's left is a pile of dust and this space has done us amazingly like I recommend if you can find an indoor space then do it and this space has done us amazingly well like I recommend if you can find an indoor space to build your vehicle out do it because it will change your life like it's been amazing hello darkness my old friend Head over to theindieproducts.com forward slash shop and check out our new merchandise. Join us on Patreon for exclusive content and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss a video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.